what I love about, you know, what I love about your character is in season one, he was kind of working across purposes. He was serving, you know, serving two different masters. Here we are, season two, your character is full on Ted Lasso. How is it picking up where you left off with, with the character and, and, you know, and then some as you, as you proceeded into the second series? Um, yeah, well, there, he's straight into it, isn't he? He's straight into a kind of uh, stable managerial role and there are no kind of, um, uh, there's nothing blocking him from Rebecca. There's no stumbling blocks. He's, uh, he's been enabled by, you know, uh, by Rebecca via Ted in the, in the end of the first season. So he's, uh, I think, the Higgins that he always wanted to be, in a way. You know, uh, the, the, he's a kind of elder of the club, you know, as the, the oldest uh, male character, certainly. Um, and, of course, yeah, it is a comedy. There are uh, dilemmas like, uh, where's his office? Um, which could be a spin-off series. Uh, so, yeah, he's in it, but he's in a better place. He's not a young, because he's older, he's not going to kind of yo-yo quite so much as some of the uh, the, the, the younger characters. Um, he's, you know, domestically secure. So, uh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, there's still room for lots of, you know, silliness. Well, a lot of season one, we had seen Higgins, you know, with, with Hannah Wadsworth for a lot of the, uh, a lot of that, a lot of that series. How was it developing your on-screen rapport with her? It's changed a little bit because, uh, because the, the character has, he's kind of wearing two hats. So he's in, uh, he's part of the Diamond Dogs in season two, and he's part of the Brass as well with, uh, Rebecca and Keeley. Um, um, making those overview decisions and the, the dumb dogs is more of a kind of camaraderie, you know, sort of um, uh, guys, um, you know, just helping each other out with personal issues and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, wor working with Hannah uh, in the uh, in the in the first season is absolutely fantastic. We we just we just got on with it. We. Uh, the scenes are just so delicious that they had between us. We just, we just love playing them, and they're just enormous fun. And we, we, I think we're, we're both sort of musical. So, you know, there's the, there's a kind of synergy between comedy and music. I think, and um, that the, you know, we, we we got into the rhythm of each other. We really we just fell into step. Yeah, so it's just delightful. Right on. Like you were saying with series two, we kind of see a pure Higgins. He gets to be the Higgins he always wanted to be, <laughs> you know, thanks yeah. to, you know, being empowered by being empowered by Ted. What was something that you yeah. were especially keen on kind of exploring or kind of now that you've go, grown into the character somewhat, you know, certainly more than series one, what was something you really wanted to bring with series two? Um, I wanted to keep some physical comedy in there, you know, and so where, you know, wherever there's a kind of, you know, tiny moment to kind of break something open and do some, I, I wanted to, I wanted to keep that in there. Um, and, uh, you know, I was able to do that a little bit. Um, but what I've enjoyed doing as well is, with the character is, is being allowed to be a little bit of a mentor because, you know, mentoring is a bit of a thing during the show, uh, certainly in the first season and, you know, enabling people in a good way and, uh, it, it, you know, is, uh, is another thing. Uh, so doing that, um, uh, again, as the kind of elder, is, is, has been great, you know. And, uh, and something, you, you know, uh, an attribute of the character that you wouldn't have quite foreseen if you'd just seen the first few episodes of the first season, you know. Um, you might just thought he was a kind of put-upon goofball. So having changed that up is great.